Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll boot up this Olamex Lime 2 board with Debian and show you how easy it is to get started writing your own C programs on an open source device like this. So first, I'll just connect my Ethernet and power it on. Okay, so the board took about 15 or 20 seconds to boot, which isn't too bad. Let's take a look around real quick and see what's here. So we've got a calculator, image viewer, leaf pad editor, vim, and an archive program for zip files. We've got Dillo, which is a more lightweight web browser, and Firefox. We've got a media player named SM Player. We've got a file manager a process viewer, and some terminal options. For preferences, touch screen calibration, um, customize the display, the look and feel, default applications, pretty much your standard preference options. So I like that. Their default Debian distribution actually comes pretty pared down. Sometimes you'll find boards like these that come pre-packaged with just a bunch of extra software, and I am not a fan of that. So I love that this comes really pared down. So to get started with C programming, all we should need is our terminal. And I would like to make this a bigger font just to make it easier for you to see. Probably something like 14. That's not bad. I can go bigger actually. Let's do 16. Cool. So when you first boot up a Debian distribution, the first thing you should do is probably run an apt update, which is going to update all of the software sources for you. The default password is Olamex. And this shouldn't take too long because the board does have a gigabit ethernet port. Okay, everything's up to date. If there were any updates that you could install, it would tell you at the end. And if you wanted to install those, you just do sudo apt dist upgrade, which would update all of your software. In my case, I'm already up to date. First, I want to see if nano is installed. Nano is installed, so we won't need to download that package. See if GCC is installed. Okay, GCC is not installed. So the easiest way to install GCC on Debian really is to just do sudo apt um, install build essential. So this contains the GCC compiler as well as some other useful programs for building software. And it's pretty small. Like it says, there's only 62 megabytes. Awesome. And now once that's all done, you should have GCC. Uh, if you type in that program, it's an error because there's no source files to compile and that's what it expects. So let's see what's in this folder. We've got... What is that? Test file. Interesting. So it comes with a script to play a trailer video for something. I'm guessing just to show off the video capabilities. We don't need that. Um, clear out the console real quick. The first thing I would do is probably set up a workspace. In this case, I'm just going to say like make dir code. So now we have this code folder. I'll just go into there and that's where I'll put all of my source code. You can call that anything, workspace, whatever you like. In this case, just code. This isn't going to be a complex enough project for me to really justify creating a folder and setting up all the make files and stuff. So instead, I'm just going to say nano. Uh, well, let's not call it main. Let's call it hello.c. So we're creating a file named hello.c and opening it in nano to edit. I can already hear the Vim and Emacs people screaming at me right now. Look, yes, those are more powerful editors, but do I need more features than basic text editing for this? No, I don't. So calm down. We've got hello.c opened, and in C, you include other source files or header files into your project using this little hashtag symbol, the octothorpe. 
and then include. And the header file that I want to include is the standard IO library because that's what contains our print function, which is what I'll use to print hello world. So after that's imported, we need a main function, which is going to be the entry point for the program. And generally in C, what you would do is you would declare an integer function. So this is a function that returns an integer, and that integer is going to be the status code for your program. I'll probably show you a little bit of that later, but basically it's an integer function named main. I'm not going to give mine any arguments. You can take arguments here to take command line arguments, but it isn't required. And inside this function, we will just say print f hello world exclamation point to say that we're serious. And then a new line symbol. If you're not familiar with C, that might be weird, but the backslash symbol basically says that you're entering an escape character. So this is going to be a special character, not just text. And then the character that follows the backslash defines which special character it is. In this case, N means new line, which is going to be like pressing return after typing hello world. So that's all we need. Your statements in C will also need to end in a semicolon just to say, hey, that's the end of this command. And I'm going to go ahead and return zero from main, which is the status code in Linux to indicate that everything ran correctly, there were no errors. So after that's done, I just press control X and it asks if I want to save and then I press Y and then I press enter because it already has it filled in with the correct name. So now if you look here, we've created hello.c. If we uh, cat that file, you can see it contains all of the code that we just typed in. And if we say gcc hello.c, it'll compile that file. Now if we list the directory again, you see a.out has been created. If we try to execute a.out, you can see that it prints hello world and that there was a new line because the command prompt started on the next line. So that's really all it takes to get started programming with C. Now you could rename that a.out file to be whatever you would like. Although there's an easier way to do that. Let's uh, go ahead and remove that a.out file. So now you can see that it's gone. Now if I type gcc hello.c and then add as an option the output name, we can just call this hello. So now you see it created this file named hello, which doesn't have any extension. It's just our program and we can execute it by typing hello. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and echo the status code of the program. You can see that the status code was zero, which means that everything ran okay. Let's go back to hello.c and change the status code to 42, just as a test. So again, I pressed control X to exit the program. And then I pressed Y to say that, yes, I do want to save and then I'm pressing enter because it already knows the correct name. Now if I do, and by the way, on Linux command prompts like this, you can usually press the up key to go into the history of commands that you've entered instead of having to type it all over again, which is very convenient. So now I can go back to this compile line here and press enter on that and it'll rebuild hello. So if I execute hello again and then print out the status from it, you'll see that the status code was 42, which is an error and I have no idea what it means, but we know that the program did not run successfully, even though it did and we just made that up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more C programming videos, let me know in the comments below and uh, until next time, bye!